Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Cold Waters. And in this video, we're actually going to have a brief departure from our Narwhal campaign. The video you see in front of you is going to be from a failed attempt of mine, uh, spoiler alert, to get a 1968 campaign going. Uh, this was after the Narwhal campaign was concluded. And the reason I'm showing you this footage today is in our history series, we've progressed past the Tang class, past the Barracuda slash K class of hunter-killer submarines, and we've begun entering the world of the hunter-killer submarine and the fast attack submarine. Although we haven't yet gotten to the Narwhal, which is really the advent of the fast attack nuclear-powered submarine, we have gotten to the point where we need to start talking about submarine weapons. And the reason I'm showing you this video, rather than the video from the Narwhal campaign, which we'll jump back into that Let's Play in our next episode, but the reason I'm showing you this video is because at the end of the day, the weapons that you will see used in this particular battle, uh, as poorly as I fight it, uh, is more reminiscent of the weapons that I'm going to be talking to you about. So we've talked about the German Type 21 class, the U.S. fleet boats, the uh, sort of guppy upgrades to the fleet boats, the K class, which was an anti-submarine warfare designated class of submarines, and the Tang class, which was the United States' first post-World War II uh, fleet boat type submarine designed to kind of go out in the oceans and, and uh, attack enemy vessels of all sorts. At this point, with the development of the Barracuda class, submarines really start taking a concerted effort to be able to fight other submarines, at least in the U.S. side. I know I've mentioned the British-built, you know, purpose-built submarines during World War I designed to sink German U-boats, but really from the United States perspective, the Barracuda class in the mid-1950s was the first attempt, early, early 1950s into the mid-1950s was the first attempt to have a submarine-designed submarine killer. And the Tang did that a bit as well. And the question becomes, if you're thinking of submarines in World War II, while acoustically powered weapons certainly were there, I think most people think of German U-boats firing straight firing torpedoes into convoys, hitting ships and them sinking. I think Americans think of the Mark 14 torpedo, which was a long range torpedo that had multiple speed settings, either for a long and slow cruise, a short, fast sprint. And I think they might've had a middle ground in there as well, but it had all sorts of problems where it was running deep under keels, never detonating or detonating prematurely. All these wartime problems that made the U.S. submarine force essentially a non-factor, despite being very modern and having some very good boats, it was basically impotent until mid-1943 when things started to get sorted out. And while that's kind of beyond the scope of this video, to understand how submarines were going to start shooting and killing other submarines, you kind of have to understand what their weaponry was. And you see the torpedoes on the screen in front of you. These are Mark 37 torpedoes, which are an early wire-guided torpedo that was used principally for anti-submarine warfare. Meanwhile, the ship in front of you is the uh, the part of the Skipjack class, and the other torpedo that it has is the Mark 16, which is a modified Mark 14 traditional World War II straight-running torpedo, no guidance, just the gyroscope, and it's designed with a contactor to hit the side of the ship, detonate, and, you know, big warhead, long range, uh, good speeds. The Mark 37 isn't quite that, and... Its origins of the Mark 37, which is principally an anti-submarine warfare torpedo, lay all the way back in World War II. So when we talk about the Barracuda's class inability to effectively keep up with Russian submarines, we talked about how it was slow, it was short-ranged, and basically if Russian submarines tried to transit past U.S. subs on battery power, they'd get by them before the, the Barracudas and the, the K-1s could do anything about it and the weapons that the U.S. had were insufficient anyway. So when you say that, the question is, well, what were the weapons? And at the end of the day, the first U.S. torpedo that was a guided torpedo was the Mark 24 mine. And the reason I go to the Mark 24 mine is because these straight-running, long-range torpedoes that we've talked about really aren't effective for sinking enemy submarines. If you've got a straight-running torpedo, and it's got long-range, good speed, and a big warhead, it doesn't do you any good if it can't follow the target. If you're trying to sink an enemy submarine, the only way you're going to sink an enemy submarine with a traditional torpedo, a straight running torpedo, no guidance, you know, big warhead, 
The only way you're going to sink an enemy submarine is if it's either at, on the surface, or maybe if you're lucky, if you hit it while it's at periscope depth or snorkeling and it doesn't hear the torpedo coming in, so it takes no action. Something where a basically surface-running torpedo can hit a target and destroy it where you know where that target is. If that target's below the water and it's maneuvering around, good luck. You're never going to see it. So what you really need to effectively target enemy submarines is a torpedo that has the ability to home in on its target, either by using active pinging sonar or by using acoustics, where basically the torpedo is listening to hear sounds in the water and it will follow those sounds. Now, I'm not a sonar man, I'm not an acoustics man, so I can't tell you exactly how that works. But the birthplace of the guided acoustic torpedo for the United States was the Mark 24 mine. This was a weapon which, interestingly enough, was designed by Harvard University, Bell Telephone Laboratories, and Western Electric, and I believe also the Underwater Sound Laboratories. This was a torpedo that was designed so classified, it was so classified, so it needed to be kept so quiet, that the Mark 24 was called a mine rather than a torpedo to confuse any enemy intelligence. It was essentially a chopped down Mark 13. The Mark 13 was the airdropped version of the U.S. torpedo used during World War II. It was chopped in half. I believe it was made a little bit wider. They put uh, sonar seekers in the front of the torpedo near the nose uh, that would allow it to hear what was in the water. And it would have a guidance system that would allow it to kind of follow the, tor you know, the target. It was very slow. It only made 12 knots. It was designed as an airdropped weapon. So the intent was to have planes fly around, drop these weapons on enemy uh, submarines, and then it would sink them. And it was very effective as, at its job. Uh, it went into production in 1943, serial production in 1943. The first models were made in 1942, so this is still pretty early in the war. And it remained in service with the U.S. Army until night, or the U.S. Air Force and, and the other services until 1948. It was also used by the Canadians, it was used by the British Navy, um, and it was used by the uh, fleet air arm of the uh, British Navy. So it was used by actually the British Air Force, the British Navy, and the Royal uh, Canadian Navy. Uh, it had about 4,000 uh, units that were produced in its years of service, and it was incredibly successful. This was the first, again, this was the first acoustically guided torpedo. So it had sonar sensors in the front. If they heard a target, they would follow it. They, moved, they would move at 12 knots, and it had a range of about 4,000 yards. It would search for up to 10 minutes. It has a small warhead, only 92 pounds. When you compare that uh, with the, the other traditional torpedoes of the time, for example, the Mark 14 torpedo, that torpedo had a much larger warhead. Uh, the Mark 14 had a warhead of uh, 643 pounds. So, you know, order, orders of magnitude, more than five times greater. But the reason is the Mark 24 was hunting enemy submarines. If you penetrate that hull with your torpedo as a submarine, that thing's going down. You're not going to, those bulkheads are not designed to withstand the pressure of the sea once it breaks through the initial bulkhead. And even if it does break through and they hold, you're not getting to the surface like that. So the torpedo was designed to hit and sink enemy submarines. It was designed to follow enemy submarines, and it was very good at its job. There were 264 attacks where Mark 24s were launched. Um, interestingly enough, there's 340 torpedoes were launched total. 264 individual attacks or torpedoes uh, were, were launched at enemy submarines. It sank 37 German and Japanese submarines, which may not sound to you a lot to you when you consider like, oh, well, there are over 200 dropped. But you need to realize this is the time before maritime patrol aircraft had sonar buoys. They didn't have uh, advanced electronics to know where the target was. They basically just had to have a hunch that there was something there, and they'd drop on it. It had... 18 more enemy submarines damaged. So more than 50 enemy submarines out of just over 200 uh, were at least hit by these things. It had a 22% effectiveness rate at, at destroying or sinking or damaging enemy submarines. When you compare that with a depth charge attack, the odds of an a individual depth charge attack sinking or, or substantially damaging its opponent, 8 or 9%. Mark 24 was at 22%, dramatically more effective. 
and this weapon coupled with others helped to bring the German and Japanese submarine threats at bay. Mark 24 remained in service, but it wasn't going to last the war much longer. However, the lessons that were learned in the development of the Mark 24 led to the Mark 27. Now, if you remember, the Mark 24 was slow. It only made 12 knots. But that was okay because the enemy you know, submarines that it was after were diesel-electric subs in the World War II vein. They were all very, very slow. And so the decision was made, all right, we have this massively successful Mark uh, 24 air launch torpedo. We should probably have something that can be fired from a submarine, which can be guided as well. And the Germans were doing this also. They were working on their uh, acoustically guided torpedoes, which would become uh, pretty effective themselves in their own right. But the Americans were working on their own acoustically guided torpedo. And that was the Mark 27. It was electrically powered, just like the Mark 24. It had a small passive acoustic guidance system uh, that would uh, both... Uh, be used against submarine targets and surface targets. The torpedo was nicknamed the Cutie by the submarine crews, uh, by the submarine crews, and entered service around the same time in 1943. Uh, it was considered obsolete some 30 years later, so it was in service for over 30 years, um, or at least you know it was around for over 30 years. Uh, interestingly enough, there's not a ton of information that I can find on this, so some of this is being pulled from Wikipedia, which I know is not the best source to pull things from. It only had a 12-knot speed, but one of the modifications of it was actually the first wire-guided torpedo. So the Mark 27 was basically a Mark 24 mine, just like the air-launched torpedo that we talked about, except it was modified to be launched from a 21-inch uh, submerged torpedo tube. They included one-inch wood glue studs, so basically they glued wood to the side of the torpedo so that it would fit inside the torpedo tube and this would allow it uh, to be fired from a submarine. Uh, one of the modifications of it was the first to use an umbilical cable. It was a 65-pin umbilical cable. I believe it was the Mark 27 Mod 4, uh, which was the first wire-guided torpedo uh, that was used. It, w it allowed the submarines to guide the torpedo into its target using a wire similar to a towed anti-tank missile or a Mark 48 torpedo that you've seen in the other videos, or in this case, the Mark 37. However, it was incredibly fragile. The wires had a tendency to break. The torpedo was very slow. Again, it was modified off the Mark 24, so it only had a 12-knot speed. This was fine against slow diesel submarines, such as what you're seeing in the battle in front of you, but it is not going to work at all against fast enemy submarines. In fact, if the Germans were facing this thing and they learned what its speed was, they could use the Type 21 and simply turn and run. The later Cold War submarines, once the teardrop hulls started being involved, once the nuke boats started being involved, would also have the ability simply to turn and run and outrun this thing. And that's one of the key limitations in the game for the Mark 20 or Mark 37. The Mark 27 was the first wire-guided torpedo and it was in service in the 1940s and into the early 1950s. It was the predecessor to the Mark 37. The Mark 37 itself, we may get into a little bit more detail later, but in essence, it was inadequate for the mo from the moment that it was built. And as a player in this game, you will feel that. You will feel this torpedo being inadequate to deal with threats that you're dealing with, especially in the 1960s. The Mark 37 torpedo was to be the principal anti-submarine torpedo that the U.S. Navy would use, and it was designed to go into service with the first of the U.S. nuclear submarines, which we'll talk about in a later episode. Suffice to say, it came into service in the mid-1950s, about a year after the USS Narwhal came out, so the Narwhal actually went to sea with the Mark 27, and it would remain in service until the mid-1970s. It had some serious limitations, but it did have some advantages as well, which I don't necessarily see in the game, but it's kind of hard to understand if they're really advantages. So the Mark 37 was, was launched out of the submarine by its own power. So most torpedoes, when they're launched out of the submarine torpedo tube, there's a jet of compressed air that pushes the torpedo away from the boat, and then you know the, the torpedo turns on and starts moving. In the case of the Mark 37... It was almost like a dry launch. The ship's electric or the torpedo's electric torpedo tube or propellers would turn in the tube while still in the submarine, and it would propel itself out of the submarine. This would allow it to have a dramatically reduced firing signature, which is important when you think about submarine warfare. The ability to substantially lower 
the amount of noise that you're making from a submarine as you're launching your torpedo means that you're going to avoid detection. One of the most common ways to detect an enemy submarine is after you is by hearing that what they call a transient when a torpedo is launched. It creates this large amount of noise, the sudden pop in the water. The enemy will hear it. You know, in, in, in the spy movies or in the submarine movies, they'll yell, transient, 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 as they, you know, detect this thing. And um, the, the torpedo will be on its way. Well, the Mark 37 goes out of the tube on its own. Lower, you know, noise signature. The problem with that is that it goes out of the tube and goes so slow. In the game, I think it's like eight or nine knots. But I think, you know, the cruising speed, based on what I can find in this book that I've been reading, tends to be close to around 16, 17 knots. But even against a Type 21 that can make 20 plus knots underwater, that's insufficient. Any submarine that can travel faster than 20 knots simply turns around and runs away. And in this game, you see that all the time. You will see enemy nuclear submarines just bolt it away from you. The weapon has a very small uh, yield warhead when compared to, you know, like the Mark 16, for example. It's only 330 pounds. Again, it allows it to be effective in anti-submarine rolls. Doesn't allow it to be so effective in an anti-ship roll. You need a bigger warhead if you're sinking enemy ships. Um, but it speeds up once it acquires. So it goes out of the tube, goes in at its slow speed, kind of cruises for a while, actually just on a wire, so the, the ship can guide the torpedo, but it's not emitting anything, it's not listening to anything, it's just, it's just going to where you programmed it to go. And at that point in time, one, there, it's, it's just a dumb torpedo, it's just relying on its gyroscope. But, as the torpedo gets to a certain distance, a preset distance, or closer to its target, it'll turn on a passive homing. So similar to the Mark 24 and the Mark 27, it'll listen for the enemy torp the enemy submarine. It'll 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 turn on its its sonar and it'll it'll listen to where the enemy is. And if it picks something up, once it closes range to an estimated 700 or so yards, then the torpedo switches over to an active sonar, which I can't find anything on the Mark 27 having. So I don't believe the Mark 27 had an active sonar, but in its terminal guidance in its final stage, the Mark, Mark 37 will switch over to active sonar and start pinging its opponent. Ping, 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 to guide it in, to help minimize the risk of a, you know, a, a decoy or some, some other trick uh, causing it to miss its target, and it'll guide itself in and, and it hit its target. But as you can imagine, as nuclear boats came out, this was brought into service as a nuclear, as an anti-submarine torpedo, specifically. They recognized that its slow speed would make it ineffective against surface weapons. Its small warhead would make it ineffective against surface weapons. And so it was recognized as a specialized anti-submarine warfare torpedo. RIP to my boat there as you see me starting a new 68 campaign, uh, or about to. But this was different than torpedoes in the past. The Mark 37, you know, was a specialized anti-surface torpedo. For the most part, most U.S. torpedoes, the Mark 14 and Mark 16 torpedoes, were used against enemy surface vessels, and theoretically they were kind of, you use them against submarines, but, but really there was one torpedo type in general that a submarine would carry, and it would be used against any type of target. Well, now you're talking about a more complicated loadout of torpedoes, some for anti-submarine, some for anti-ship, neither really good at the other. Um, and, and in the case of Mark 37, in my opinion, not good at either. Um, but, you know, it, it, a more complicated loadout for a submarine to manage, and, and you see that kind of go away with Mark 48 that is great against surface and subsurface weapons. But the Mark 38 comes in as this, this submarine killer at a time where it was almost obsolete. It's really only weapon was that it could be used somewhat stealthily. It could be launched in that stealthy manner that we talked about. It could close in on its target that stealthy way. It would use the homing uh, of the acoustic homing to close its distance. So really the only point in time at which it would be detected was once it was, at, the idea would be once it was within 700 yards and at that point when it went active it would speed up to 37 knots and the enemy would have no hope. That was the idea. I don't think it would have really worked that way in practice. It's probably going to get detected before it gets into 700 yards, and at that point you're off to the races and you're going to lose. And especially later, Russian submarines were able to make faster than 37 knots anyway. 
when you're talking about the Papa, you're talking about the, um, you know, the Alpha, you're talking about these later Soviet subs that really helped push and, and, and spur the development of the Mark 48 and then the Mark 48 ad cap. But the Mark 37 was that first torpedo killer weapon for the hunter-killer submarines. It was the first weapon that was really effective at what it did, though. Because we can talk about its limitations in terms of speeds, but when the K-1 you know, or Barracuda class went to sea as anti-submarine assets, they didn't have adequate weapons to deal with enemy torpedo or enemy submarines. And neither did the Tang class, and neither did anything else. So the Mark 37 really is that first... Uh, development that really gives you a potent anti-submarine weapon. The only problem is that as it's coming out, nuclear submarines are just around the corner. And with the development of those submarines, you're talking about high speeds, underwater, and these weapons become useless. But the nuclear submarine will be the discussion in our next video, where we will also return to our Narwhal discussion uh, and, and Let's Play. In the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion about the early uh, U.S. anti-submarine torpedoes and the early acoustically or, or just in general early U.S. submarines uh, torpedoes that were guided torpedoes. Let me know your thoughts below as always. And until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching and I'm out.